Because by the mid to late nineties, all chairs were starting to look the same. Yeah. Do you remember the transition? You, Cause you had mentioned, um, rollerblade casters do you do you remember the transition from when you guys started to first start using like rollerblade wheels because i would imagine if you were using your everyday chairs it was all yeah you know five inch um, rubber casters oh, yeah that's a good question here's um my recollection is people that came in from tennis sort of brought that with them because they were already using them okay um but there were there were track guys and tennis guys and field event guys Bas- and, basketball you know, and basketball. Some of the quads, the, the the high pointers we know of, they were playing basketball. Mm-hmm. So they were also using rollerblade wheels, I believe. Kind of like a kind of like things now. Like there's a lot of um, basketball amputees that are you know yeah. finding yeah. out like oh I can I can class in. Right. So since we've been I call it in search of function. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. Well, it's the new, uh, in my opinion, it's kind of the new arms race, you know, like I I would imagine back in the 90s, it was finding the best equipment. Now it's trying to find the most functional guys. Well, you know, also, Tim, this lends to the theory. I mean, back in the day, I think the best lineups out there were four really high-functioning deuces. Mm -hmm. But... Once you found, you know, quote, your freak, I'm going to throw some names at you. You know, back in the day, uh, most of the freaks were either polio or perhaps, you know, like Steve Pate, Guillaume Barre, Angela Monjovi, um, polio, Joe Soros, polio. Those, those were the best of the high pointers because they had the most function and they were also great athletes. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, now... If you find a guy, um, Corey, for instance, if you find a guy, whether he's had a lot of sports experience or not, if he's got that function, you want to train him. You want to work with him. And, you know, some of these guys have become the very best athletes we have. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because, like, if this sport didn't exist, there wouldn't be anything – I don't think there'd be anything really out there for those type of players um, right. to really excel at. I mean, we're talking best in the world, you know. Right. You know, we've also seen the evolution of, well, you may or may not know about this, but back in the day in like the early 90s, I would say there was a group of people that wanted to make quad rugby, spinal cord injury only. It, thank God it got voted down. I always thought that was ridiculous. But um, some people were just seeing their roles disappear because of who had either more function or better cardio or, you know, all of the above. And um, I mean, even back in those days, our best, our best player with Quadzilla at the time was Brian Hansen, and he was a 3-5. He was a walking spinal cord, but he had limitations because he was slow. And a one, when the chairs changed, he left. I mean, he, he couldn't compete anymore because he couldn't get off of a one or two or a .5 and a one. They could just hold him all day. He couldn't hop, really, and he was stuck. And, but in our day, he was the best. He was a great passer, a great ball handler. No one was pressing yet, and he could play the middle like nobody. He could just pick the ball up out of the air because he had one really good hand. Yeah. And yet it, it all changed, man. The evolution, it all changed. There's, um, there's a lot of players that are playing today where I'm just like, man, you are just one generation too late because if, you were, if yeah. you were in this game 15 right? years ago, man, you'd be a fucking superstar. Okay, for example, for example, you would know this better than me. When's the last time we had a really, really dominant, strong high pointer through spinal cord? On Team US? Sure. Um, Well, I mean, the last one, I would say, would be uh, Chance Sumner. 
Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I mean Wheeler's Wheeler's a two five, you know, and and he's kind of in that weird anomaly. I mean, he is a spinal cord, but he's got just enough function here, you know, to make him a, a really effective two five. Um, but as far as a, a true high pointer in in the three three point five class, I mean, the, the last one was Chance. Um, I guess Zupan Zupan was up there. Yeah. Um, and he hasn't made you for what five years? Zupan or no, not Zup. Uh, Chance. Chance. Uh, Chance's last year, I think, was 2012. He was he was on the yeah, 2012 so team. I'm trying to think if he continued on after yeah. that. And Zup's Zup year was what? Oh four, oh five. What's or did he play? No, he played in 08, didn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. That was that was before my time. I know. Uh, Zupan was still on in, during during that time. Well, here's one I'll, here's one I'll throw at you. Um, pound for pound, if you can find and clone four Nick Springers, or maybe three, and one guy with hands and arms that can throw the ball accurately and decently, um, that I'll take that team everywhere. As long as they're in shape and they can cut like Nick could, holy moly. Nick, Nick, could, Nick was one of the few guys I thought that could cover Riley Bass, and he's a deuce. Yeah, that's, um, you know, that's one of the big debates is because, you know, in my opinion, or at least since I've been playing, my USA Dream Team would be that four-deuce lineup from Beijing. Um, but I don't, I don't know how they would stack up against, uh, the teams today. Like, I don't know. I don't know if they would be yeah. able to beat Japan yeah. or That's Australia. A That's a good point. These are changed again. Which so I mean, just, hey, on our podcast, on our podcast, we just interviewed Gumby and he, he made a point that is, is so true. And that is that Chuck Aoki, um, has reinvented himself a few times now. And I hadn't really given it that much thought, but. Chuck's been with the squad now 10 years, I think, or nine years, something like that. And, uh, I mean, let's face it, he's still a dominant 3-5. And, um, he's a, you know, he's I, a three I, I internationally. He's, he's not particularly big. He's just really good at whatever he does. Yeah, he's a, he's a three internationally. But, um, yeah. you know, one thing that Chuck doesn't really get a lot of credit for is um, his brain power. I mean, the guy's a really smart guy. Oh, for sure. Um, I, and I think a lot of that is just because he, it looks like he plays a real physical game. But, um, you know, he doesn't, I don't think he really gets a lot of credit for being as cerebral as he as he is. Well, then people aren't paying attention. He's one of the smartest guys out there, for sure. 